Let's continue learning with our second chapter. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are all coded documents that a web browser renders together into a visual web page. When the browser renders the page and then does a subsequent execution, it needs an interface for handling the web page. Enter the DOM. No, that's not someone's nickname. The Document Object Model, or DOM for short, is a programming interface for HTML and XML documents. It enables programmers to manipulate the page in various ways, such as searching for elements, changing element content, changing the HTML structure of the page, and even changing the CSS styling of the page. The DOM is called an object model, quote unquote, because it presents the page as an object. That document object contains an object representing each element within it. Element objects are nested from a root element to mirror the HTML structure of that page. What's really nice about the DOM is that it is not dependent upon any one programming language. It's most commonly used by JavaScript to manipulate web pages in a browser, but it could be used by any other language. A good example of this would be using Python to scrape web page contents. Another good example would be using test automation to poke and prod at pages under test. The DOM also works for XML, but for this course, We'll focus on HTML. The first step with DOM programming is getting the elements themselves. Programming with the DOM makes one thing very clear. There is a difference between an element and its locator. A web element is an object representing a live rendered HTML element on the page. A web element locator on the other hand, also sometimes called a selector, is a query that finds and returns specific elements from the DOM. In short, locators find elements. Why is this distinction important? Two main reasons. First, direct paths from root to child would be very long and complicated. It's not uncommon for child elements to be nested under dozens of layers. Imagine programming object references from parent to child for the whole chain. That would be crazy long. It makes much more sense to write smaller, more meaningful locator queries to find the desired elements. Secondly, there is no guarantee that specific elements will actually appear on the page. Dynamic contents means ever-changing content, and elements can be added, removed, or changed on a whim. Developers could also change the HTML structure too, so it makes more sense to try to discover desired elements. Furthermore, errors in the HTML, CSS, or JavaScript could cause web elements to not appear on the page at all. For these reasons, we must separate the concerns of the element objects themselves and the locators used to find them. There are many types of locators, such as IDs, names, class names, CSS selectors, and XPaths. We'll cover different locator types in great detail in the future chapters, as well as when to use which one. For now, just know that locators are the standard way for finding elements in a web page, and that every element can have a unique locator. Also, know that a locator can return multiple elements, not just one. It will return all elements found that match its query. Once element objects are obtained, there are many ways to interact with them. JavaScript specifically provides methods 
not only to change the state of the elements, but also to send user-like actions to them. For example, the click method will programmatically click an element as if a user had clicked it visually. The text content property will get the text displayed by the element. The get attribute method will get a particular element attribute by name. And likewise, the set attribute method will add or change an element attribute. Anything a user can do visually in the browser can also be done programmatically with JavaScript actions. In fact, test frameworks like Jasmine, Mocha, Jest, and Cypress all rely upon direct JavaScript calls within the browser. Locators are also crucial for black box testing of the browser. Selenium WebDriver relies upon locators to find elements and interact with them. The main difference for WebDriver calls is they cannot change the state of elements. They can only access the state and send interactions. Furthermore, WebDriver calls don't necessarily call JavaScript directly. They operate using the WebDriver protocol as implemented by each browser type. Regardless, the DOM and the need for locators are still present with Selenium WebDriver automation. And as a caveat, WebDriver can execute JavaScript code directly.